Once upon a time, there was a kingdom, a kingdom full of happiness. And in that kingdom lived a king and a queen that had only one wish. And that one wish was to have a child. The king and the queen were very kind people, so they knew in their hearts that one day their wish would come true. And one day soon enough, their wish came true. They were blessed with a baby girl. Because she was as bright as the sun that lighted up the day, they named the little princess Sunshine. The king and the queen decided to have a big ball to celebrate their joy and birth of Sunshine. Everyone was invited, even the fairies living in the mystery forest. But the king and the queen made a big mistake. They forgot to invite one fairy in particular. Everyone from all around the kingdom and the kings and queens from the neighboring kingdoms presented their gifts and best wishes to Sunshine. And last but not least, it was time for the 12 fairies. The fairies gave incredibly unique presents to Sunshine. With their magic wands, they gifted Sunshine with anything she could want in the world. In the end, only three fairies remained to give their presents. And they also gave wonderful presents to Sunshine. May the beauty of the world be with you at all times. Little princess, my gift is eternal happiness. May you never be sad and always happy. <laughs> Just as the last fairy was going to present her gift, something very unexpected happened. The whole ballroom was suddenly covered in green smoke. And when the smoke was gone, the black fairy appeared. The king asked who this fairy was, crushing this beautiful ceremony. The other fairies immediately recognized her. It was the evil-hearted Black Fairy. So, I see that everyone is invited. All the people in the kingdom. Your friends, kings, queens, and the fairies. But unfortunately, I was not invited. The king apologized for their unpolite behavior. Well, I will not leave this beautiful little princess without a truly unique gift of mine. The most beautiful princess will grow surrounded with happiness, love, and admiration, but... On her 16th birthday, just before sunset, she will poke herself with a needle and she'll be gone forever! Seize that monster! yelled out the king. But the Black Fairy disappeared with her evil laughter. <laughs> it was the last fairy's turn to give her gift. She was not as powerful as the Black Fairy, but she wished for something which could at least lighten up the bad curse. I cannot prevent the curse, but I can affect the outcome. May you not die when the curse unfolds, but go in a deep sleep and wake up with a kiss of true love. My gift to you. The king, with the attempt to prevent this bad curse from happening, ordered every needle, sewing machine, or anything that even resembled a needle to be collected and burnt in the courtyard of the castle. With the gifts of the fairies, Princess Sunshine grew as a beautiful and kind child that everybody loved. One day, her dad, the king, ordered three fairies to take care and guard Sunshine, which has proven to be a rather difficult task for them. Because Sunshine was not going to be in touch with anyone but the three fairies. Sunshine grew up to be a very beautiful young girl with her guardian fairies. Finally, the day arrived. It was the 16th birthday of Princess Sunshine. 
It was only until the sunset before Black Fairy's curse was going to unfold. The king and the queen did everything they could to prevent the curse from happening, but they still worried that it would happen anyway. They locked up the beautiful princess in a room in order to protect her. But having no idea what was going on, Sunshine was not pleased with being locked up. Suddenly, a door appeared in the wall. Sunshine was mesmerized by this door she had never seen before. And she heard weird noises coming from behind the door. Curious and unaware of what was going to happen, she entered the door. In the room she entered, there was a woman sewing with her back turned to the door. And Sunshine walked spellbound towards the sewing machine. Just as the sun was setting, the Black Fairy's curse unfolded and Sunshine reached out to the needle. And at that moment, it happened. With only a touch of the needle, she fell down and dozed in her eternal sleep. <laughs> and there it was. At sunset, Black Fairy Spell was cast on Sunshine's 16th birthday. They dressed her up with the most beautiful outfit and put her on a bed of flowers. So started the days where Sunshine would be known as the Sleeping Beauty. The king and the queen wanted to stop the pain, so they decided to put everyone in the castle to sleep until the time the princess wakes up. years passed. One day, a handsome prince was passing nearby and he saw the castle, covered with thorn bushes and ivy. His men told the stories about the castle and the Sleeping Beauty. It really excited the prince, so he decided to go in the castle. The bushes were too thick, and the thorns made it almost impossible to go over. So he drew his sword and started opening his way by cutting up the bushes. Cutting his way through, he finally came to the door, and he saw two guards at the door, sleeping. He opened the door and was stunned by the view. There were people on the floor everywhere he could see. He started to walk around the castle, and he came to the king's room. The king and the queen also were sleeping on their sofa. Then he saw a room with a half-open door. He entered. This was the room where the Sleeping Beauty was sleeping, on a beautiful bed of flowers. The prince came next to the bed, looked at the beautiful princess, and leaned over to her ear. You're the famous Sleeping Beauty! You're so beautiful! Whispered the prince. Feeling overwhelmed with love, he kissed her on her forehead. At that moment, she opened her eyes and saw the handsome prince looking at her. With her awakening, everyone in the castle woke up from their hundred years of sleep. The king and the queen were in a great shock. They woke up and ran to Sunshine's room to see what was going on. And when they saw their beautiful daughter awake, they were full of joy and happiness. The prince asked the Sleeping Beauty to marry him. The princess smiled at him and accepted his proposal. And the king, of course, gave his blessing to the prince, who saved his daughter and his kingdom. They had the most beautiful ceremony anyone had ever seen, and they all lived happily ever after. Rapunzel Once upon a time, in a faraway land, there lived a lovely couple. One day, the woman gave her husband the good news that she was pregnant. Her husband was so glad about the news 
that he said he would do anything for her. And one day, she told him that she was longing for some crunchy lettuce. If I can't eat some of that delicious lettuce from our neighbor's garden, I won't get any rest. So her husband went into the neighbor's garden to fulfill his wife's wish. But the poor man did not know that his neighbor was a very dangerous witch named Camilla. No one knew, but the witch was 150 years old. To look young, Camilla could only touch golden things, so she covered everything in her house with gold. She covered the plates, spoons, and forks, bottles, lamps, even the chairs on which she sat. Everything was covered with gold. And that evening, there was a knock at the door. It was the neighbor who had come to ask for some lettuce for his pregnant wife. Camilla said that he could take as much as he wanted from the garden. But under one condition. If your child has golden blonde hair, I'll take it. <laughs> the man didn't know what to do, but he foolishly agreed and prayed that his child would not have blonde hair. But a few days later, his wife gave birth to a beautiful baby girl with golden blonde hair. They called her Rapunzel. Camilla somehow knew the baby would be born with blonde hair. So, she took the baby from her parents and brought her home. The witch took very good care of Rapunzel. She combed her blonde hair, which grew a little longer every day. Camilla never wanted her hair to be cut because she would take long strands of hair and cook it in a magical cauldron and turn it into gold. My magic turns her long golden hairs into gold. I'm set for life. <laughs> Yippee skippy. Deep in the forest, Camilla used her magic to build a huge tall tower where Rapunzel would be trapped and her hair would be safe. The tower didn't even have stairs inside. It was just one small room with one small window. Rapunzel grew up in this room alone for 18 years, except for Camilla's visits. When Camilla came to visit her from time to time, she called on her from below. Rapunzel! 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 Let down your golden hair! Rapunzel would let down her long braided hair down the window, and Camilla would hold on to it and climb up into the tower. Mother, why doesn't this tower have stairs? Why can't I step on the ground and play with flowers and animals? My beautiful golden-haired girl, this is the only way I can protect you from the evils of the world. There are many dangerous animals out there and all kinds of mean creatures. If something were to happen to you, I wouldn't survive. One day, Rob, the handsome prince of the country, who was born on the same day as Rapunzel, took his horse for a ride in the forest. The prince heard the singing in the forest and listened carefully. 
This voice is such a beautiful voice. And followed the sound of the mysterious voice until he finally arrived at the bottom of the tower where Rapunzel lived. When she sang at the window of the tower, he immediately fell in love with her. He glanced around for a door to the tower, but could not find one. And just then, Camilla also arrived at the tower. So the prince hid behind the bushes because he knew of her reputation as a wicked, mean witch. Oh no, that's Camilla, the evil witch. What is she doing here? Rapunzel! 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 Let down your golden hair! Rapunzel let her long hair down for Camilla to climb up. The next day, the prince returned to the tower. But when he arrived, he tried to imitate the witch's voice and called up to the tower. Um, <clears throat> Rapunzel! Rapunzel, let down your golden hair. Rapunzel thought the voice sounded odd, but let her hair down anyway. Prince Rob quickly climbed up the hair, curious to find the voice that had sung so beautifully. Mm. Oh, what a hairy climb. Rapunzel was frightened when she saw him. Uh, um... Who... Who are you? How did you get here? I'm Prince Rob. I thought you might be in trouble because of the witch and all, and no stairs. Um, oh no. I, I, I'm Rapunzel. I don't know you. My mother says strangers are dangerous creatures. Oh no. Get out of here! Don't worry, I'm not a dangerous person or creature. I simply heard your beautiful voice and wanted to see what the witch was up to. So, I guess I'm here to rescue you. The prince's words softened Rapunzel's heart, and she began not to be afraid of him anymore. Miss Rapunzel, would you like to go down off the tower with me to smell the flowers, take a walk in the forest, and meet beautiful animals? Rapunzel wanted to discover the life outside for years. So, she accepted the prince's offer straight away. got an idea that can help both of us go down the tower. When the next day arrived, the evil witch Camilla arrived at the tower and was about to call for Rapunzel when she saw her long blonde hair hanging down from the top of the tower. Hmm, I guess she saw me coming and let her hair down already. Camilla started to climb up to the top of the tower. And then she heard sounds of a horse. She thought someone might be nearby, but she didn't bother any further and climbed on because she wanted to reach Rapunzel as soon as possible. When she arrived in Rapunzel's room, she was shocked. Rapunzel wasn't there anymore. She had cut her hair off and run away from the tower. My gold! My gold is gone! No! <laughs> Rapunzel! Rapunzel had cut her hair and tied it to an iron on the wall of the tower so she and the prince could climb down together. Camilla, alone in the tower, desperately touched Rapunzel's cut hair. No. No, 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 no! It doesn't work anymore because the hair is cut off. The hair must have roots to turn into gold. In the meantime, Prince Rob and Rapunzel arrived at the prince's castle. And the prince told everything to his father and mother, the king and queen, 
the king said that he had heard the name Rapunzel from an old farmer and his wife. So the prince immediately took Rapunzel to the old house of the couple who had said they had lost a baby named Rapunzel. As soon as her poor mother and father opened the door and saw Rapunzel, they recognized her. My daughter, my dear daughter, you found us! The evil witch took you away from us! It has been so many years, but you're finally home. We are your real family. Rapunzel was very happy to meet her real family. And what do you suppose happened to Camilla, who was left in the tower with no gold? I'll find you, Rapunzel. I will hunt you for the hair that turns into gold. The Story of Little Mermaid Aria Once upon a time, in the very deep ocean, there was a world that no one knew about. Dolphins would sing, jellyfish would dance, little colorful fish would swim, and in the deep waters was a glorious underwater kingdom. The sea people in this kingdom lived in peace with all the underwater creatures. It was ruled by King Poseidon, who loved his daughters so very much and always kept them in the kingdom. Arya was the youngest and did not understand why he never let her go anywhere. He told her there were dangers outside the kingdom's gates. She thought he must mean the men and creatures living on the land. Arya, someday you will be old enough to wear your own crown. But until then, you must stay here in the kingdom where it is safe. I forbid you to leave. But, but, I, I'm so curious about the people and animals on the land. The people on the land have no respect for the life in the sea. They throw trash in our ocean and we can't trust them. So you need to trust your father, Arya. Little Mermaid Arya did listen, but the more she thought about what her grandmother said, the more curious she became. I just cannot wait for my grown-up crown. The people living on the land might be just as kind as we are. And little Arya thought up a plan in order to sneak out of the underwater kingdom. She thought about her friends, Big Whale Willie and Little Dolphin Dolphy, because they could go in and out of the water kingdom whenever they wanted. At the gate to the underwater kingdom, the swordfish guards moved aside to let Dolphin Dolphy and Whale Willie out into the ocean. They were free to come and go as they wanted. But once they were out of sight, Whale Willie opened his mouth wide and out came his stowaway, the Little Mermaid, Aria. And just like that, Aria was out on her own and swam right up to the surface of the water. For the first time of her life, she felt the wind, saw the sunset, and heard the seagulls. This is an amazing feeling! Here's my whole deep blue sea Everything is fun, friends with me The king called me the little mermaid The very best daughter of the king of the sea Just look around, you will see the joy A beautiful life and the ocean roar Just then, Arya heard music coming from across the water. She dove into the water and swam towards the sound. Then 
she saw a huge boat and fireworks over it. A boat? Come, Dolphy, let's get a closer look. Arya, stop! It might be dangerous. <laughs> her friend Dolphy had warned her, but Arya didn't listen. Arya, stop! She swam up next to the boat, where she could see the king of the land and his son, Prince Edward. They were celebrating the prince's birthday. A prince? Arya, he shouldn't be here. Those soldiers could be dangerous. We should go back home now. They might see us. The prince started playing his flute on the bow of the ship. He doesn't sound like a bad person. Arya sang along with the tune of the flute with her beautiful voice. The prince heard her voice and looked around surprised. Whose beautiful voice is this? Be careful, Arya! They're going to see you! Far, far away, King Poseidon's evil sister, the sea witch Vega, used to live in the palace of King Poseidon, but had done bad things and was banished from the beautiful underwater kingdom. The day has come, the daughter of King Poseidon and a human. I sent thunder and storm and lightning, waves to overturn the boat and sink the prince. <laughs> because of the sea witch's spell, the waves began to break apart the prince's boat. We need to help them! Arya dove into the waves, swimming through the debris of the sinking ship all the way to the bottom of the ocean. She saw the flute of the prince and grabbed it. Then she saw the prince sinking to the sandy ocean floor. She took his hand and swam as fast as she could towards the land. Wake up! Please wake up! The prince slowly awakened and was shocked to be alive. You're alive! And to see a beautiful red-headed mermaid next to him. Arya heard a dog barking and realized she was on the land and quickly dove back into the sea. The king and his soldiers and a young lady were searching for the prince, hoping to find him on shore. A girl saved me. Father! I couldn't see her face, but I feel like I've heard that voice before. Meanwhile, back in the ocean, Arya returned to the underwater kingdom. She still had the prince's flute and couldn't stop thinking about how handsome he was. Her father had been looking for her, and when he saw the flute, he knew that she had gone up to the surface of the ocean. I warned you, Arya, and you didn't listen to me and ran away from the safety of the kingdom. You should have waited. But the prince would have drowned! What? A prince? You left the protection of the kingdom, Arya. You must trust me so that I can protect you from danger. I forbid you to leave the underwater kingdom. King Poseidon left. He was upset and deeply worried about his daughter's heart. But Arya was still determined to return to see the prince again. And so, she made a terrible mistake and left her father's kingdom again to seek out the evil witch Vega in the dark part of the ocean. Vega's two-headed guard snake was watchful around the witch's sea palace and saw the little mermaid coming. Vega, the king's daughter approaches. It's time to take revenge on the king. 
I knew this would happen. She has a wild, rebellious heart. Let her in, Snake. Arya was a little frightened, but wanted to see the prince, so she went in to ask the witch for help. Vega agreed to help, but demanded something valuable from the Little Mermaid. I will prepare a magical potion to turn you into a human. You will walk on the land and dance with your precious prince. But in return, I will take your beautiful voice. <laughs> my voice? I mean, but without my voice... Mermaid shrugged and accepted the evil potion because she was foolish and her heart wanted to fall in love with the prince. But remember, the magic potion will wear off in three days. Unless you get the prince to fall in love with you. Otherwise, you will change back into a mermaid and never remember your prince or your father ever again. <laughs> Arya was so foolish and drank the magic potion. Then she started swimming up to the surface of the sea. And as she got closer to land, her tail started to disappear. And instead, she had human legs. Her friend Dolphy saw her and quickly came to help her. Arya, you've never had legs. You need to be careful. Little Mermaid managed to get to the shore with the help of Dolphy. Prince Edward was already there, looking for the girl who had saved him. You seem familiar. Have we met each other before? Arya did not have a voice, so she just nodded and gave the flute back to the prince. Yes. We have met. You must be the girl who saved me from drowning. And that voice I heard while I was playing the flute on the deck. What is your name? Arya tried to explain what happened to her. Oh, you cannot talk? But she could not speak. So the prince decided that she must be a different girl. Since the girl he remembered had a beautiful voice. Still, he wanted to help this desperate girl and took her to his palace. At the Land Kingdom's castle, the prince's father was preparing for his son's wedding to another young lady. Arya watched from far away and was sad that she could not marry the prince. The days passed and she could not talk to the prince. Arya knew the potion would wear off soon, and she would lose all her memories. Arya thought it was impossible for her to make Prince fall in love with her without her voice. Then the third day arrived. Arya was so sad. But just then, something unexpected happened. Her mermaid sisters came out of the sea and then her grandmother. My dear grandchild, we have come to rescue you and break the witch's evil spell. Then the waves rose up in a giant splash and Arya's father, King Poseidon, came out of the water. Arya, my beautiful daughter, you went to the very danger I was trying to protect you from but I have rescued your voice in this seashell. I have broken the witch's spell, so you will have your voice, and you will always remember us. The king of the sea pointed his trident to the seashell in the hands of the grandmother, and the spell was broken. Her voice returned back to Arya. My voice? Thank you, my dear family. I love you so much. Ah! Whale Willie rushed the Little Mermaid to the prince's boat. The prince and a princess from another kingdom were about to be married. But suddenly, the prince heard something and stopped.
It was Arya's beautiful voice again. After seeing Arya on the whale, Prince Edward jumped into the water to go speak with her. It was you. I knew it. You are the girl who saved me. My name is Arya. And so it was that Prince Edward called off the wedding and made peace with King Poseidon's ocean kingdom. Arya was the first mermaid who ever learned to live on land as a human and as a mermaid in the sea. And eventually, she and Prince Edward became friends and married and lived happily ever after. Cinderella's story. Once upon a time, in a land far, far away, lived a beautiful girl named Cinderella. After Cinderella's kind mother died, her father married Lady Puffy. Lady Puffy had two arrogant, jealous, and quarrelsome daughters, just like herself. They would fight for hours, even over something as simple as a hairbrush. Ah! Stop it! I said stop it! Give it back! It's mine! Ah, no! No! One day, Cinderella's father had to take a long journey. Lady Puffy took this chance to give all the hard work in the house to poor Cinderella. Cleaning the whole house, carrying wood to the fireplace, and preparing meals took up all of Cinderella's time. Despite her hard work, Lady Puffy and her daughters were cruel and proud. Mother, Cinderella is filthy. Don't let her eat in the same room with us. Don't let her sleep in our room. We're having nightmares. You heard what my beautiful daughters have said? Go and find a place to sleep in the attic. <laughs> Poor Cinderella settled in a dusty old room in the attic. Out of her small window, she looked down to the garden. And from time to time, she would talk to a snow-white pigeon. Why, hello, sweet pigeon. As the days went on by, while cleaning up her room in the attic, Cinderella met two little mice. Who are you, little guys? Hi, I'm Cheddar. I am Mozzarella. And I am Cinderella. You little guys love to eat cheese, don't you? I will prepare a delicious meal for you. Yes, 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 yes. 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 We are starving. We haven't been able to go to the kitchen for hours. There is a mean, hairy, sharp monster down there. That nasty cat, Papu. First thing tomorrow morning, I'm going to prepare a delicious breakfast for you two. The next morning, Cinderella went to the kitchen without making any noise. The mean cat, Papu, waited in front of the tiny mouse hole in the kitchen to hunt Cheddar and Mozzarella. Cinderella silently took some pieces of cheese and headed to the attic. But then, Lady Puffy's daughters caught her. What are you holding in your hand? And where are you going with it? Um, it's just some cheese for breakfast. Mom, Cinderella is stealing our food. I'm stealing? I would never steal anything. A thief and a liar. What an evil girl you are. The little mice went downstairs and started to run around the kitchen to scare the evil sisters. Ah! Oh no! A mouse! There's a mouse in the house! Mom, I'm scared! Not one mouse, it's two! Ah! Lady Puffy was just about to catch the mice when there was a knock at the door. The royal ambassador arrived. <clears throat> His Majesty the Royal Prince has prepared a grand ball at the castle tomorrow night. 
All the young ladies around the country are invited to this ball. As soon as they heard about the grand ball, Jezebel and Cassandra ran with huge excitement to their rooms and started to pick dresses for this important evening. Also, Lady Puffy wanted her daughters to look beautiful. So, the evil stepsisters forced Cinderella to prepare beautiful ball dresses for them. The next day arrived. Cinderella was very tired. Her little friends tried to wake her up. Cinderella, wake up! Wake up! You have to go to the ball! But I don't even have a dress. The only dress I have is dirty. Close your eyes, Cinderella. We have a surprise for you. Her little friends took Cinderella to the middle of the room. The white pigeon lifted the cover of the wall with its beak. Ta-da! Ta-da! I can't believe it! It looks amazing! Cinderella put on her new dress and did her hair, and finally went downstairs. But her evil stepsisters saw Cinderella and went crazy with jealousy. Lady Puffy didn't want Cinderella to go to the ball when she saw that she was prettier than her own daughters. So she threw a bowl of beans into the fireplace in the living room for Cinderella to pick up. If you can pick up the beans out of the ashes and put them back into the bowl within five minutes, you can come to the ball with us. <laughs> Cinderella wanted to go to the ball so much that she began to pick up the beans. Her little friends saw her situation and came to help. Within five minutes, they picked up all the beans and put them back into the bowl. Cinderella ran after Lady Puffy, who was already leaving, and showed the full bowl to her. Lady Puffy still did not want Cinderella to go to the ball, so this time she used Cinderella's dirty dress as an excuse. And they left Cinderella in the house and went on to the prince's castle. Poor Cinderella was very sad. She sat down in the garden and wept and cried right under a hazelnut tree that her mother had planted long ago. And just then, the hazelnut tree began to shake and to shine. And a beautiful fairy appeared in front of Cinderella. My name is Leabelle, and I am here to help you. Don't be sad. You will go to that ball as well. But how am I supposed to go to the ball like this? Leave that to me. Hmm, I just need a pumpkin. The other things I need are already here. Cinderella came back, holding a pumpkin in her hands. Fairy Leabelle began to wave her magic wand around and turned the pumpkin into a beautiful coach. The mice into very nice horses and the pigeon into a well-dressed coach driver. Cinderella couldn't believe what she saw. But how did you do this, Leabelle? The fairy waved her magic wand again and put Cinderella in a beautiful blue dress. On her feet appeared sparkling glass slippers. I look like a princess now. Thank you, Leabelle. Now it's time for you to go to the ball. Hurry up. The fairy warned Cinderella before she headed to the ball. But don't forget, you need to be back at midnight or else the magic will be gone and everything will be as it was before. Cinderella listened to the fairy carefully and finally headed to the castle. The pumpkin coach stopped in front of the big castle. Cinderella, with her overwhelming beauty, entered the castle. The guests of the ball saw Cinderella 
and wondered who this beautiful young lady was. Neither Lady Puffy nor her daughters realized that this beautiful girl was Cinderella. Prince Leo moved towards Cinderella and fell in love at first sight. Beautiful young lady, may I have this dance, please? Cinderella was mesmerized by the magical dance with Prince Leo, so that she forgot about the time. When the clock was just about to strike twelve, she remembered the fairy's warning. You need to be back at midnight or else! Cinderella left the prince back and ran out of the castle quickly. Where are you going? I don't even know your name. Cinderella ran down the castle's stairs and all of a sudden lost one of her glass slippers. Unfortunately, she did not have time to go back and take it. So she ran to the coach as fast as she could and left the castle. Find the beautiful owner of this lost slipper. If necessary, every girl in the country shall try on this shoe. As soon as the clock stroke twelve, everything turned back to what it was before. Cinderella went back to her room in the attic. She thought about the magical night she had had with Prince Leo and realized that she fell in love. But it seemed to be impossible that the prince would recognize her with her old dirty clothes. Time passed, and the prince had a huge mansion built next to the castle for the precious glass slipper. All the young girls living in the next country visited this place to try the slipper on. Even Lady Puffy and her daughters visited the famous mansion but did not take Cinderella with them. You stay at home. It is impossible that the shoe belongs to you. Right, the shoe is going to fit Cassandra or to me. But I also am a young girl living in this country. I have the right to try on the shoe as well. Lady Puffy did not even listen to Cinderella. She locked her up in the house and left with her daughters. Of course, the glass slippers did neither fit to Cassandra's feet nor to Jezebel's. Ah, uh, if I try only a little bit more, I think it will fit. At nighttime, when the mansion's lights were sparkling, Cinderella made it out of the house, thanks to mozzarella and cheddar. She arrived at the majestic mansion and walked towards the sparkling glass slipper. As she was just about to try on the shoe, Prince Leo stepped into the room. Stop! Don't move! You're going to damage the shoe! No, no, no! It's my shoe! It fits me perfectly! She is telling the truth! She is Cinderella! Cinderella! courageously put on the shoe in front of Prince Leo, and he realized that the shoe you fits perfectly that night to Cinderella. You, you are the beautiful girl I danced with on that night. May I know your name? My name is Cinderella, Your Highness. Will you marry me, Cinderella? Cinderella happily said yes to the prince, whom she fell in love with. They got married in the big castle and lived happily ever after. Once upon a time, there lived a beautiful princess in a big castle. One day, her father the king 
gave her a golden ball as a birthday present. Happy birthday, my daughter! Thank you, father. The princess loved this golden ball. She started to spend all her time playing with it in the garden. One day, she went out with her ball and started to play with it, tossing it around. The princess came next to a little pond and kept on playing with the ball. Right at that moment, she could not catch the ball after she tossed it in the air, and the ball started to roll away. My ball! The princess ran after her golden ball, but the ball got faster and faster. Finally, the ball fell in the pond and sank into the deep waters. The princess sat down next to the pond and desperately started to cry. My beautiful golden ball! How am I going to bring it back? Suddenly, she heard a voice. Ribbit, my beautiful princess, why are you crying? Ribbit. She looked around but could not figure out where the voice was coming from. When she looked closely. She realized that the voice was coming from the frog that was right next to the pond, looking at her. The frog leaped towards the princess and asked again after he got closer. What's wrong, my beautiful princess? Why are you crying? The princess got stunned when she saw a talking frog. A talking frog? How can that be? Well, here I am, talking beautiful princess. Now tell me, why are you crying? Coming back to herself, the princess started to tell her story. The golden ball that my father gave me fell in the pond. It's already at the bottom. How am I going to get it back? The frog came next to her feet and made an offer. My beautiful princess, I will bring back your ball, but in return, I will need you to do me a favor. The princess was curious. Hmm. So what's the favor? If you accept to be friends with me, I would like to live with you in the castle. The princess thought about it, and then accepted his offer. So the frog jumped in the water and went out of sight. A while later, he appeared with the golden ball and threw it to the princess. Reunited with her ball, the princess happily started to walk back to the castle. Seeing the princess leaving the frog behind, Frog yelled after her. My beautiful princess, you forgot me. You promised to take me with you to the castle. Ribbit. The princess yelled out from afar, laughing. Frog like you even imagine to live with a beautiful princess like me. Ribbit. The princess left the frog right there and went back to her castle. In the evening, the king, queen, and the princess sat down at the dinner table. Right when they were starting to eat, they heard a knock on the door. The maid told them that a frog had arrived and told them that he was invited by the princess and asked permission to come in. The king, surprised, asked his daughter, "Would you like to tell us what's going on, my daughter?" Well, daddy, the princess told all about what happened that morning at the pond. If you gave a promise to the frog to save your ball, then you must keep your word for it. The king ordered the maid to welcome the frog inside. A while later, the door opened and the little frog came in, leaping and stopped next to the dinner table. Good evening, everyone, and thank you, my king, for allowing me in. With one big jump, the frog landed next to the princess's plate. He looked at her, unhappy. 
The king ordered a plate for the frog, but the frog stopped it. No need for a plate. I can eat from the princess's plate. The frog started to eat from her plate. The princess was really upset with him, but she thought that he would leave after the dinner anyway and didn't say anything. But the frog had no intentions to leave after the dinner. When she left the table, he followed the princess to her room. Time passed and the frog got sleepy. <sighs> My princess, I'm really sleepy. I'd like to sleep in your bed if you don't mind. Afraid to upset her father, the princess had to say yes to that too. The frog jumped on her bed and put his head on her soft pillow. Trying not to show her anger, the princess laid next to the frog and slept. In the morning, the frog woke the princess up. Good morning, my beautiful princess. I have one more wish from you. If you do that, I will leave right away. Hearing that the ugly frog would leave soon, without making it obvious, the princess was extremely happy. All right, shoot. What is it now? I want you to kiss me, my princess. The princess jumped out of her bed furiously. How dare you? That is impossible. The smile on the frog's face disappeared and instead a teardrop ran down his cheek. The princess thought for a while. Oh well, what's the big deal with one tiny kiss? Evidently, I won't see him ever again. And so she gave him a kiss. As soon as she kissed the frog, a bright white light covered the room. Due to the light, the princess couldn't see anything. After a short while, the light disappeared. The princess started to see again, but this time she could not believe her eyes. Right where the frog was standing a moment ago, there was a very handsome man instead. The princess was stunned with what she was seeing. She couldn't believe her eyes, and so she asked, Who are you? What happened to the frog standing here? My beautiful princess, I am the prince of a land far away. The evil witch cast a spell on me and turned me into a frog. To break the spell, I had to spend one night next to a princess and get a kiss from her. Thanks to you, I am safe from being a frog forever. The princess was very surprised, but also very happy with what she heard. They both went next to the king and told him all about it. This should be the second lesson the frog has taught you, my dear daughter. We should not evaluate anyone by only their looks and judge without knowing the whole truth about them. The king hosted the prince for a few more days in his castle. The prince and the princess came next to the pond where they first met. My princess, will you marry me and come with me to my kingdom? The princess smiled and nodded, accepting the prince's offer. And right at that moment, a sound broke the silence. Ribbit! Ribbit! They turned and looked where the sound came from. There was a frog next to the pond, looking at them. They held their breath and waited for him to talk. But it didn't happen. They both started <laughs> laughing. Don't worry, little froggy. I'm sure you too will find your princess one day. And laughed a little more. <laughs> After a short while, they got married and lived happily ever after.